Good afternoon, Christ Church Ventura. Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're able to greet each other in the name of Jesus because of this unity that we have in Christ as a body. So I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm reminded of a book actually that I once read called Praying Backwards. It's written by Dr. Brian Chapel, and he talks about basically taking the concept of how we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. What he argues for is to begin the prayer in Jesus' name because that will orient us to what we're doing for the rest of the prayer, that we are going to God in the name of Jesus. And so even our greeting right now can be in the name of the Lord Jesus as we begin worship. I'm going to read you a little section of that book here. It's amazing. I highly recommend the book. It says, To do anything in the Lord's name means to do it for His purposes. When we pray in Jesus' name or greet each other in Jesus' name, we are petitioning God to bring glory to Jesus and we are asking for His will to be done in everything so that He will be honored above all. Chapel continues on, This means that while we should present many kinds of petitions to God, a prayer offered in Jesus' name ultimately requests His desires. So my desire in greeting you, church, in the name of the Lord Jesus, is to bring us together under the umbrella of fulfilling the desires of Christ, that we would meet and worship and love Him and love each other. Today, during the worship service, uh, I would ask you to participate in the readings and the singings. And it may be a little awkward for you. Maybe you're by yourself and you don't want your roommates to hear you in the other room. Maybe your kids are right now in this moment spilling some drink on the carpet so you have to pause this video to come back to it in a little bit. Wherever you may be right now, know that you are united together and that your brothers and sisters all over Ventura County are doing the same thing of reading and singing together and worshiping the risen Lord. Now, as we prepare our hearts for worship, this is a weird time, obviously. Roy and I have been working diligently in preparing uh, sermons and readings and preparing songs, liturgies, uh, putting all this stuff together in a video, editing it, putting it up on YouTube, on Facebook, all these things. It's a, it's a new world. Um, I can't believe I'm the IT guy for uh, uh, anything, honestly. I've Noel has helped out quite a bit, to be honest. Um, but I would encourage you, as you prepare your hearts, to remember your brothers and sisters. And take a moment right now, as this song begins to play, as the prelude begins to pray, I would encourage you to greet the people in your living room in the name of the Lord Jesus, even though it may be your wife or your kids or your friend or uh, whatever, whoever you may be with. And then I would also encourage you during the song, to take your phones out in church. I know it's crazy to say, but take your phone out and text two other people in the church right now. Text somebody you're close with, and then if you have somebody's phone number that you're not too close with, text them and just say, greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus, so that we will in unity together greet each other in the name of the Lord Jesus. And if you don't have anyone's phone number or you'd like to, go ahead and comment in the uh, window right here, or it might be on this side, I don't know. Whatever, there's a window that you can comment on. Greet each other in the name of the Lord Jesus. Prepare your hearts for worship, church, as we listen to this prelude. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in His world.
We begin with the word of grace from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Please join me in this confession of sin. O God, our master and king, we are imperfect subjects of your realm and stumble in unbelief and fear. We so easily forget the scope of your love displayed for us in Jesus Christ. Teach us to know that grace precedes, accompanies, and follows our salvation. Help us to remember the great privileges of our redemption in him. Without him, we are strangers and outcasts. In him, we are children and friends. Without him, our lips are sealed in guilt and shame. In him, there is confidence and praise. Without him, our horizon is dark and foreboding. In him is the expectation of light, knowledge, and glory. Hear this assurance of pardon from Psalm 40. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He brought me up out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock, making my footsteps firm. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to God. Many will see and will trust in the Lord. How blessed is the man who has made the Lord his trust and has not turned to the proud nor to those who have lapsed into falsehood. Our call to worship comes from Psalm 95. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountain are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Great is the Lord, he is holy and just. By his power he proves his love. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. Great is the faithfulness of the Lord our God. Let's join together in this familiar hymn, again to new music, This Is My Father's World. This is my Father's world, and to my listening ears, all nature sings and round me of the spheres This is my Father's world I rest me in the thought Of rocks and trees Of skies and seas His hand the wonders wrought This is my Father's world the birds their carols raise The morning light, the lily white Declare their Maker's praise This is my Father's world He shines in all that's fair In the rustling grass I can hear Him pass he speaks to me everywhere This is my Father's world Oh, let me ne'er forget 
That though the wrong seems oft so strong, God is the ruler, yeah. This is my Father's world, the battle is not done. Jesus who died will be satisfied, and earth and heaven be one. This is my Father's world, the battle is not done. Jesus who died will be satisfied, and earth and heaven be one. And earth and heaven be one. And earth and heaven be Let's join together in this prayer of adoration. O oh God, your blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work. He who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The affirmation of faith today is taken from the Heidelberg Catechism, questions 50 through 53. Why the next words, and is seated at the right hand of God? Because Christ ascended to heaven to show there that he is head of his church and the one through whom the Father rules all things. How does this glory of Christ our head benefit us? First, through his Holy Spirit, he pours out gifts from heaven upon his members. Second, by his power, he defends and keeps us safe from all enemies. How does Christ return to judge the living and the dead comfort you? In all distress and persecution, with uplifted head, I confidently await the very judge who has already offered himself to the judgment of God in my place and removed the whole curse from me. Christ will cast all his enemies and mine into everlasting condemnation, but will take me and all his chosen ones to himself into the joy and glory of heaven. What do you believe concerning the Holy Spirit? First, that the Spirit with the Father and the Son is eternal God. Second, that the Spirit is given also to me so that through true faith, he makes me share in Christ and all his benefits, comforts me and will remain with me forever. The Old Testament lesson is taken from Isaiah chapter 60, verses one through seven. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you and his glory will be seen upon you. And nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together, they come to you. Your sons shall come from afar and your daughters shall be carried on the hip. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and exult because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephthah, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall bring good news, the praises of the Lord. And the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered to you. The rams of Nabioth shall minister to you. They shall come up with acceptance on my altar, and I 
will beautify my beautiful house. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us join together in the prayers of the people. And let me encourage you to add to these petitions that we will offer your own. Let's join together in prayer. O God, light of the minds that know you, life of the souls that love you, and strength of the hearts that seek you, and in whom to abide is to stand fast forever. You have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son, accept and fulfill our petitions, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We pray for the Church of Jesus Christ that we may become a repentant people marked by grace, truth, and joy. Hear our prayer, O Lord. We pray for all who suffer tribulation, that you would extend your fatherly affection and they would find refreshment for their souls and healing for their bodies. Hear our prayer, O Lord. We pray for inspiration in our several callings to do the work you have given us to do with singleness of heart as your servants and for the common good. Hear our prayer, O Lord. We pray for the multitudes of those who do not know Christ's redeeming grace, that they may come to know and worship you as you have been revealed in your Son. Hear our prayer, O Lord. We pray that you will increase in our hearts true faith and grant us grace to be ever mindful of the merits of Christ, that we may live in great gladness and freedom. Hear our prayer, O Lord. And now please join me in praying the prayer that Jesus gave to his own disciples. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now please join me and lift your voice in this song you'll recognize it marvelous grace put to new music by matthew smith
again, church. Uh, my name is Trevor Allen. I'm the church planting apprentice here at Christ Church Ventura, for those that don't know. I have the privilege and the honor to once again open up God's Word with you for this afternoon's worship service. The text I chose today was uh, Matthew 5, verses 14 through 16. So if you would turn there in your Bibles, uh, as you're turning there, I want us to consider and set the context for this. This is the beginning of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, one of the most famous sermons ever preached that has been talked about outside of Christendom as a famous passage of literature as well. Uh, what we see here is Matthew paints for us this picture of Jesus taking and proclaiming good news to a dark world. This long-awaited light is now shining in a world of darkness. And all of this is unto the glory of God himself. But before I get too far ahead of myself and, and I do the whole sermon just in the introduction, I would ask you to scroll in your analog Bibles or, or flip in your tablets or your uh, apps or whatever you may need to do, whatever verb you choose. If you could turn to Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. And I know it's a little awkward, but... If you're able, would you stand in your living room or your kitchen, or if you're driving, don't worry about that, but would you stand as I read God's word for us and know together that your brothers and sisters are standing as well to hear the word. Matthew 5, 14 through 16 says this, You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works, and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to the Lord. If you're standing, please have a seat. If you're sitting, uh, please don't lay down. <laughs> Stay up. Would you pray with me, church? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, light of the world and giver of life, thank you for recording these messages of good news to us, your people. Thank you for the eternal life that you have given to us, not because of anything that we have done, but because of your overwhelming love and grace. Lord, right now, I'm speaking to a room's a room full of people, your people, who love your word because it reveals you to us, Jesus. Let us rest in the Holy Spirit. Let us have a seat and feast on your truth this afternoon as ones who didn't necessarily compile the meal, but as those who get to simply partake and to simply eat. Holy Spirit, encourage our hearts to remember 
that you are the light of the world, made to bring glory to our Heavenly Father. Holy Spirit, give us ears to hear and eyes to see, and hearts to understand your gospel afresh once again. Lord, calm my heart. To pray these things in any other name but yours would be pointless, Lord. So we pray all these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. So since we have about 20-ish minutes for this sermon, uh, I'd like to orient you guys to the big idea. And you know I love the big ideas. I stick with them. I love them. Uh, And so we're going to continue on in that. There are three main points that will undergird the big idea today. The first main point I want us to see is that you all, or y'all, as we'll see that the text says, that y'all are the light of the world. And this is your identity. Secondly, I want us to see that y'all's function is to be seen by others as light in a dark world. And the final point encompasses this, that the purpose of our identity and our function is to bring glory to our Heavenly Father. So this ultimately has a terminus, has a telos, has a goal of the glory of God, that we are identified as light and that we function to shine. These three main points of our our light identity, our glowing function, and our glorifying purpose is summarized in our big idea. And the big idea today is y'all are luminous, to show our Father as glorious. Now, I hope to repeat that a few more times in the sermon, so hopefully it's this proverbial snack that you can stick in your back pocket and carry around with you all week. And you can remember and know that y'all are luminous to show our Father as glorious. So let's just jump right into it. Uh, Looking at verse 14, would you look with me? It says this, You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Now, Jesus, as I said earlier, is talking to a huge crowd of people. It says this in chapter 5, verse 1, that there's a huge crowd of people gathered around Jesus. And his disciples are sitting right there in front of him. And when he addresses this whole crowd, he says, You are the light of the world. He refers to them as you, as the ESV says that I just read, or whatever translation you may have. Now, this you is interesting because it's actually the Greek word, which is kind of fun to say, so I'd encourage you to have your little kids say it or yourself say it, umis. The Greek word umis, uh, basically, I'm going to prove a point real fast, so I'm going to nerd out for a quick moment. Umis is the second person plural pronoun in Greek. So Jesus here is not talking to a single individual amongst a crowd of people. He doesn't point the crowd and say, you right there, you are the light of the world. What he's doing is he's saying, y'all. He's saying, you all are the light of the world, a plurality of lights amongst great darkness. So those that would follow Christ Those that would identify with Christ, he is identifying as the light, the y'alls of the crowd. I bring this up because Jesus, in his words, is fulfilling an Old Testament passage, an Old Testament prophecy, a promise that goes all the way back to Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 3. It says this, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. And nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. In Isaiah, there's this prophesied light that will come from God, that will shine across all the darkness of the world, that the people of God will be able to be illuminated by this coming light. And they will be able to bring glory to God, to all the nations. But the question is, though, who is this light? You know, if, you, if you've been in church for any period of time, you know the good, Jesus, uh, the good Sunday school answer is Jesus. But Jesus himself testifies of this. He says, 
in John chapter 8, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. This light is Jesus Christ, the promised Messiah. He is the light of the world. Now to draw a quick analogy, think for a moment of a dark and cloudy sky after a massive rainstorm. You know, the sun is covered up, the wind is blowing, there are clouds everywhere, and then all of a sudden, this massive, vibrant band of light shines across this dark sky, and this beautiful rainbow appears that all the onlookers can see that in this chaos, there is beauty. It can, they can see the color in the gray, and they can see that there is light in the darkness. Here's this picture of darkness that is broken up by this beautiful ray of light and color and beauty. An amazing thing about the rainbow is that their illumination is actually not their own. And I think we all know this, but consider this for a moment that this rainbow is powered by this alien light source. The sun is what powers the rainbow. You see, the, the sun's light shines through these dark storm clouds. And when these rays of light enter into little droplets of water, there is light that is then refracted, it is reflected, and then it, then it is dispersed across this, the sky to show this beautiful color. As human beings, we are made in God's image. That means that we have this unique capacity, unlike any other being or thing, that we're able to reflect and refract and display the glory of God through our lives for the rest of the world to see. It reminds me actually of our big idea, right? That y'all are luminous to show our Father as glorious. So we, all of us, y'all, this, this light of the world, that's what Jesus calls his disciples in this moment as he's preaching the Sermon on the Mount. And that same y'all actually applies to us as the church today because we follow after Christ and we have this light of Christ. So we are identified as light. Jesus calls us light. But what is then our function, right? Like, so here's our identity, but what's our function? What do we do as light? To answer this question, if you look with me at verse 15, I'll read it for us. It says this, Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. Jesus here makes it plain enough for the smallest children among us to understand that if you have a light, its function is to shine. A light cannot shine in darkness if it's being hidden and it's not seen. The light needs to be lifted up in a room to bring illumination to it. It's like a weary traveler getting stuck in the woods and he sees the light of a cabin and goes to it. Or it's as if there's this beacon of safety, a lighthouse on a cliff that points us towards safety and away from danger. But sometimes light isn't always this beacon of safety. For us, sometimes a function of light is light exposes who we are. Like light coming into a dark room that you turn the lights off, you know, when the guests come over and you, you turn the lights off in the, the junk room and you're like, oh, I hope nobody goes in there. And you turn the lights off and you just throw all your stuff in there. Somebody walks in there and they turn the light on, they see all of the disheveled mess. Light exposes. For me personally, I remember the first hundred times I ever heard the gospel. Each time I heard it, it was more offensive to me. It got progressively offensive to me. The light exposed realities in my life that I was adamantly trying to suppress. Realities like there is a God and that this God who made everything, he created me. And I'm in relationship with him, either in good relationship or in a bad relationship with him. 
the apostle describes the apostle Paul in his ministry describes this in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. He says this, that in their case, the God of this world blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord. With ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake, for God who said, let light shine out of darkness has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Each time I heard the gospel, this light that shined into my life, it was exposing my darkness. This light that now shines out of us as servants of Jesus Christ is the same light that was shown into us by the grace of God himself. Our proclamation is not our good administrative skills or our Sunday morning worship attendance or how many old ladies we helped cross the street this week. Rather, the proclamation of our hearts is this good news of what our Redeemer has done for us. So it has to it kind of begs the question, where did this darkness come from? If, if there's light shining in darkness, then that means that darkness came from somewhere. It all starts back in the Garden of Eden. When God created all things, including us as human beings, and he called us very good. And as our first parents, humanity's representatives, Adam and Eve, they rebelled against God because they were not satisfied satisfied in reflecting the glory of God. Rather, they wanted their own glory to shine throughout all of creation. And in the way that our first parents walked, we today are not satisfied being the ones to reflect the glory of God. Rather, we want our glory reflected. We want people to see good in us so that we are accepted and that we are validated and we want our glory to shine so that others will want to be like us or maybe that others will leave us alone and they won't bother us anymore whatever the the nature the motivation behind it we do not seek fully the glory of God apart from Jesus Christ himself so as both Adam and Eve and us have rebelled against this true light, we were cut off from true light. We were doomed to dwell in darkness until the final judgment for our punishment and our sin would be poured out on us forever as rebellious, dark sinners. But God, in his mere good pleasure, from all eternity, he entered into a covenant of grace where he would deliver us out of our sin, where he would deliver us out of our misery. He delivers us out of our darkness and he brings us into the light of his salvation and his safety and his joy all through the work of our redeemer, of our true light, Jesus Christ. That redeemer of God's people is the Lord Jesus himself, the light that came into darkness. Here is some good news that the eternal son of God broke into history and he took on flesh and blood. He took on bones and marrow that we could live rightly because he lived rightly for us on our behalf in front of God. He perfectly loved God. He perfectly loved other people. He perfectly loved creation. He did what we could not do. There's even more good news that the darkness of death, the punishment of our sin, and the plans of Satan could not suppress this true light that came into the world, Jesus Christ. Because for three days, Jesus was in the grave and he rose from the grave. He defeated sin and death and all of our enemies. He restrained them and he conquered them on our behalf. He ascended to sit at the right hand of God the Father, where he now rules and he now reigns as king over all creation, as the true light that shines in his church for all the people to see. This message is the light that we carry in us, church. The gospel of Jesus Christ, that we cannot hold 
this true light in our hearts without becoming true light ourselves. As true light, we as Christians are co-laborers with Jesus Christ in his kingdom. Not because we're so talented or we're so smart or we're so rich or we're so miserable that he takes pity on us. No, rather we are part of, by God's grace, he calls us to labor with him. That it goes beyond just merely believing and being transformed as an individual, but rather it goes into caring for each other as the church. That we shine light into each other's lives and that we share light with the dark world, whether it be family or friends or co-workers. Do you remember what our big idea is? Do you remember? Y'all are luminous to show our Father as glorious. So as we begin to wrap up this sermon, as, as we start to bring it to a close, there's one more verse I want us to look at in verse 16. And that's going to kind of answer this question for us. Is there purpose to our light identity and our function to shine? What's the purpose of this whole thing? Yes, it's to the glory of God. Is, is Spoiler alert, we already know. But let's explore what Jesus tells us more in this passage. That we can get motivated. That we don't just say, yes, it's to the glory of God. Is a is a uh, typical thing that we as Christians say. Especially as Reformed Christians, right? Like, what is the chief end of man? Man's chief end is to glorify God and to enjoy Him forever. That should motivate us and strike this light to burn even brighter inside of us because we have been given the light of Christ to carry the glory of God throughout all of creation. Look with me at verse 16. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. As the light of the gospel shines in us, church, we are like these little candles floating around in a dark world where by our light, others will see the glory of Christ, the glory of our Father in heaven, and they will acknowledge him, hopefully, in truth. They will repent of their sin. People will see us as lights in this world and they will it will confront their darkness. There will be a battle that takes place in the heart. Don't think that this is just merely passing out flashlights to people that know they're in trouble. We shine the light of life into a dark and dying world. There is confrontation that will take place in this. But by God's mercy and but by God's grace, those in darkness will repent. Is that not totally worth every bit of confrontation we may have? That we are able to share the light of Christ with other people. That hopefully these that are in darkness will turn from their darkness and they will respond to the irresistible call of God's love in their lives. Thus, as our lights shine, we add candles to this beautiful candelabra of redemption. That as our light shines in darkness, the light of Christ grows stronger and stronger in this world. Remember that y'all are luminous to show our Father as glorious. But if you're here, if you're sitting in the room right now, and you don't feel very luminescent in the moment, if you feel like you're walking in a dark cloud yourself, if you feel like there is light that's hard to see, if you feel this weight of life, especially in this season, where dread and stress and exhaustion and frustration and fear and depression, If those are your companions right now, but you were in Christ and you can't see the light, I encourage you to rehearse the gospel to yourself. Keep retelling yourself the story of this good news. Look to the true light, Jesus Christ. He will not turn from you. He will know you. He will remember you. He will shine his grace on you. He promises it. Call Jesus out on his promises. And know that you're not alone. That you're not the only one feeling this way. That you have a band of brothers and sisters that stand right beside you. 
Let's pray for each other, church. Jesus, as our Savior, addresses the crowds as, as y'all. And so we, like these little water droplets that form the rainbow, we reflect the light of the eternal Son of God, and we shine into each other. And we share this true light with each other. Therefore, let us mutually encourage each other and point one another toward this true light so that we can be equipped and that we can be nourished for good works so that not only will the rest of the world see the light of Christ, but the church itself will be undergirded and made even more luminescent than she already was as we share light with each other. The Lord planned for our good works that they would shine the brightness of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ for all to see in this dying world. What an urgent and glorious calling that is, that he didn't just snap his fingers and it was all done, but he's called us to co-labor with him. He calls us light. Because one day, friends, this light will be true and we will be able to see it for all times. The book of Revelation says this, And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light. And its lamp is the light, and by its light will the nations walk, and the kings of the earth will bring glory into it. Until this final day, we have a mission to accomplish individually. We have a mission to accomplish as the church, that together, as we fill each other with the light of Christ, that the light of Christ will pour out of us into our broader communities, all for the glory of God. Y'all are luminous to show our Father as glorious. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, I thank you that you've seen us and that you've stepped down into darkness where there is no hope of salvation apart from you. I thank you for the grace and the peace that you've shown us in your son. Father, I thank you that you would have a plan of redemption to send your only son to, to bring us out of this darkness. And Holy Spirit, I thank you for illuminating our hearts and our minds and renewing our wills in the face of Jesus Christ. That we're not only saved from something, but that we are saved for something. And that is to share your goodness throughout all this world, and to love each other as the body of Christ, and to love you, God. I pray that you would bless us, Lord. Let us reach out to each other as we're feeling a need for encouragement. Let us uh, reach out to each other as we're filled with light to share with others. I pray for Christ Church Ventura, Lord, that you would guard us and protect us during this time. Pray these things in your name. Amen. One of the ways that we truly miss uh, the aspects of worship is in giving, bringing our offerings bodily and putting them before the Lord. I want to thank you, all of you who have sent your gifts to the P.O. Box to secure them and to see that they're deposited and able to be used uh, for our the ministry of our church. Thank you so much for your faithfulness and generosity. And let me lead you in these words of doxology. Join me. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Our great God and Father, we do thank you for your amazing generosity to us supremely expressed in the giving of your son, but in so many more ways. Lord, truly you are the God who gives and you open your hand and you satisfy the desires of every living thing. We stand in awe of your grace, your generosity and your love. And we pray that our gifts, as we give them, will increase and multiply, that you would multiply us as a people, that you would gather 
to this church many more souls. And we pray that these resources might be used to that end. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now please join me in this prayer of commitment. Almighty God, we recognize our dependence upon you, and we thank you for revealing the way of salvation by the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light, enkindled in our hearts, may shine forth in our lives. Give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light, now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last days, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Now receive this benediction. May you be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith and that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able with all the saints to comprehend how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge and that you may be filled to all the fullness of God. Amen. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of God is on you. Arise, see, though the earth grows dark, that the Lord will arise upon you. The Lord will arise upon you. Nations will come to your light Lift up your eyes and see We'll gather together and come to you And your love will be all that we know And your love will be all that we know Arise, come to the open gates For the Father is welcoming The Lord brings peace and redemption to all who believe. Nations will come to your life.